Hello, Monetization Nation. In the last episode with Vivica Van Rosen, we discussed how we can make our LinkedIn profile stand out and ways we can build credibility through LinkedIn. In today's episode, we're going to discuss how to create a LinkedIn business page. Do you have any yeah. stories or, or advice for our, our listeners and, and watchers about recurring revenue? You know, that's really kind of a mind shift that, that people have to take. Um, so many folks, when they start businesses, you know, they come from a consulting place. So they come from, you know, time for money. And it's hard enough for them to even get into the, well, maybe I can create a product, um, you know, an online product that, that trades time for money. Like it just, it's ongoing, it's recurring. And then another huge shift for people, um, especially people who have services, is go from, uh, go from, you know, single instance commodity type services into subscriptions. And that's a big thing that we did. We just moved from, uh, you know, buy our LinkedIn marketing program or not, not LinkedIn marketing, selling with LinkedIn. That was before, you know, buy our selling with LinkedIn, selling with sales navigator, selling with video program, um, you know, access for a year into a modern sales mastery subscription, which is actually a better deal because you get access to everything we have. And in order to keep it interesting and in order to keep people subscribed past the first two years, right, we have to keep updating and upgrading the information. But we've moved way beyond time for money. Like none of, none of the principals at, at Vengresso do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. Um, and we haven't for years and years, but even our, even our online, you know, Vengresso on demand training, it's a subscription now. And we, and we learned after the first year, like, seriously, I mean, after 18 hours of selling with LinkedIn, what more could we teach? And we realized, okay, if we're going to make a subscription, we have to continue adding value, adding value, adding value, and finding ways to make it interactive and engage. So we have, you know, live coaching, live training sessions. And that was a big shift to overcome, but it's what it's what you need if you want to stay in business. It's what you need if you want to grow and scale. And quite frankly, it's what you need if you want to be acquired eventually too. Yeah. Yeah. You look at the multiple of EBITDA that you get when you sell your business. If yeah. you might get three to five times more money for the same revenue exactly. stream, if you turn it into a recurring revenue business. Exactly. 100%. Another tectonic shift we talk a lot about is diversifying through information products, taking content, knowledge, expertise, and, and monetizing that, productizing that, right? Yeah. And, and you guys, that's what you do. Your whole business is around selling information products. Can you yeah. talk us through what are some of the ways that, that you monetize information and any ideas or, or stories or secrets you have for our audience? Yeah, we kind of did the opposite with my book, ironically enough. So you can buy my book on Amazon for $14, or if you go to our website, you can get the PDF of it for free. So we actually did the opposite in order to build the top of the funnel, yep. right? So yep. um, we went from, you know, well, we can make 10 bucks a book to, hey, you know, we can get 10, 15, 20, 30,000 more people into our funnel. And of that 10 or 13 or 15,000 people, maybe a hundred are actual buyer personas of ours, but yeah, maybe we can get them into either one of the one-off online programs or into our modern sales mastery program. And so you do need that funnel. You do need that stepping stone. You're not going to say, you know, Hey, Nathan, you got $600,000 to invest. No, um, you know, with, with the, with the company, and I don't think I'm allowed to say who they are, but with the company that just invested 600,000 with us, they started with a $24,000 uh, they started with a $24,000 pilot program, which then morphed into a $100,000 pilot program, bigger pilot program with now morphed into everyone in the company can be moved through our modern sales mastery program. And so you've got it, you got to move people through the funnel and depending on what your product or service price is, you have to adjust accordingly, right? So, um, but yeah, having the bite-sized pieces and then getting people to realize a la carte is not the best value for them. And if they can yep. afford it, and that's the other thing, right? It's all about value. 
Like it's not the cost of a $10 book or a free book. And, you know, if you want to go to our website, um, it's, you know, how is this going to change my LinkedIn profile, my credibility, my ability to engage. And, you know, if I can get one $15,000 deal out of it, then yeah, the $10 is worth it. So whatever it is that you're, you're selling, you have to get people to understand the value and you have to stair step them through the funnel. Yeah. Yeah. Russell Brunson calls that the yeah. value ladder, right? You exactly. Gotta, value ladder. You, 100%. You've you got to sell something small and yeah. then you've got to over deliver. So they're yeah, extremely time. happy. And then they want to step to the next level yeah. of your value ladder. Yeah. And they have to continue getting value. Like if this company didn't, we, we, now make, you know, we, we, we actually won't let people go through our program unless they have some kind of CRM system and they have to put attribution in there because we want to prove not just allegorically that, you know, Hey, and this happened, right. Hey, Joe, uh, I can't say her name either. JD um, was able to book, you know, make 35 connections, book 10 me meetings and close three deals in three months using our system. That's great. Allegorically, but let's look at pipeline, how much pipeline can be attributed to going through our system. So obviously that's what we do. You've got to prove value. You've got to prove value to your customers or clients going through whatever program or service you have. And then you have to take that and prove it out to the general public. That's the only way you're going to keep your existing clients happy and get new ones. What is LinkedIn marketing and why is it so important? Yeah. And I'm shifted because LinkedIn marketing was so 2011. So I'm, I'm shifting more to, um, you know, LinkedIn branding um, and LinkedIn content marketing, but in yes. LinkedIn marketing. So number one, you know, you've got to have a great brand and your whole company has to have a great brand. So whether you're a solopreneur or, you know, you're a fortune 50 with 2000 employees, you've got to make sure everyone looks good. And part of that is making sure that you don't have a bunch of resumes up there. And most people, I mean, let's face it. If you go to your profile right now, does it read like a sales page that's focused on your buyer and what their points of pain are and how you solve for them and how you've helped other people solve for them? Or is it a resume? You know, quote, a crushing sales guy with 25 plus years in the president's club. Um, and so that's not really going to sell you. You want your profile to be buyer focused, buyer centric, and you want it to be a resource, which is why you don't, you know, you don't want your resume, unless you're looking for a job, you don't necessarily want to upload a, a PDF of your resume. You want to upload, as we mentioned earlier, testimonials, case studies, use cases, things, you know, checklists, eBooks, things that people can go to that will help them before they ever, you know, buy you or buy your product or buy your service. And if your if your company and I'm yes, sales and yes, marketing for sure, they need to have that, you know, buyer centric focus, but the person in the back office, because we can't control how LinkedIn profiles show up in a Google search and we can't show up, we can't control how they show up in a company search or in a keyword search. And the last thing you want is someone representing your company and, you know, they barely have anything about your company at all, or they've got the old story. We've, yeah. we've just gone through a whole branding, uh, and literally right before we got on this call, I was working with our, our marketing team and our customer success team, cause we've done a recent rebranding. And so we have to make sure that, and we only have 36 employees. We need to make sure that all 36 of us are representing the new brand prospect better, sell more. Right. And, and we don't want it the old, the old one. And so we've got to make sure that our brand is is out there and so whether you're like i said solopreneur or company of, of ten thousand, you've got to make sure your brand is being represented the right way and that it's focused on your buyer so that's you know and that's only step number one and then you want to make sure that your marketers and your sellers are sharing the right content on you know using the right features at the right time to the right audience and so that's a whole other set of training and potentially tools that they can be using as well. But that, that ability to create a brand and then create awareness through your employees is incredibly powerful. And by the way, you do not need a paid account in order to do that. All of this can be done yep. for free um, with, you know, as long as you have the right knowledge.
When you're setting up your profile, what are you, what are the yeah. most important strategies that somebody needs to know? Yeah. So, and I'll kind of take you through, I'll, I'll, I'll open the doors and kind of take you through what we do. So, you know, starting at the top, that, that, that banner or background image is key because it's a huge, it's a third of the page of free marketing space for you. And it's not that everyone in your company has to have the exact same banner. We always create multiples of the, of whatever marketing message that we're pushing out. And we let our employees choose which one they want. Um, but yeah, you've got to have that, you know, brand alignment. So the fonts, the, the imagery, you know, the colors should all be somewhat aligned to your website, to your other socials, et cetera. So that's huge right there, that, that banner. If you only do one thing, make sure that you've got good banners and make sure that it's congruent across all your, your employees. The second thing is the headline. You know, you're lucky if you have people, you know, title it company, but that means very little, like, right? So CVO of Vengresso, no one knows what a CVO is and no one knows what a Vengresso is. So we've got to have kind of our, our model, our motto, our tectonic shift right there, helping, you know, B2B sales leaders and sellers create more conversations on LinkedIn or whatever it is. Actually, we're shifting to a new, a new motto. So I'll have to bring that in, but you want that title to be focused on who you help, how you help them. And because we have 220 characters now, who you are and what you do. So monetization nation, you know, get people understanding what that is and how it's going to help them. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, you've got that featured section, depending on what type of profile you're using, you've got that featured section, which should have not just one and done content, but go into your company's blog, sort through, you know, any recent information that's relevant to your buyers and pop at least three pieces of content and keep that refreshed. In the about section, you've got 2000 characters to expand upon who you help, how you help them, how you've helped other companies like them. You can put your logos. I mean, the names of your companies in there, not the actual logos. Um, you know, you can put little tiny testimonials, but you've got to really, again, focus on that buyer. Um, and then as we've already mentioned, things like getting the right keywords in your skills so you can get the right endorsements, getting those recommendations, making sure everyone's saying the same thing about your company in the experience section, getting you know company publications in the publication section. You can build a template out for, and that's exactly what we do with Teams. We build a template out for the different sellers and then they can just plug and play, you know, copy and paste sections into their profile. So again, whether you're one or 10,000, you can use a template to create that strong brand. So as far as your profile headline or background image headline, make sure your photo looks like you. So when they jump on a zoom meeting with you, it's not like, wait, what? <laughs> Who's that? Um, and then, you know, you want that about section that focuses on your buyer, who they are, what their points of pain are, how you solve them. And then the media that, that, that supports that. So even if you just do that, it's kind of above-ish the fold. It's at least on the first page. Um, that's going to make a huge difference in, in building the credibility of your company. Okay. So moving to our company profile, how should we be leveraging that? Same. So, um, you know, fortunately with your company profile, usually only one or two people have to deal with it and it is a little bit more one and done. So again, you want your company um, profile image to be congruent with the ones of all your, your employees. Um, you want your about section again, 2000, it might be 2,500 characters now, but again, focused on your buyers, who they are, who you help. Don't try to be everything to everyone. I mean, you're going to be nothing to anyone if you do that. So yeah. really focus on your buyer personas and how you can help them. Um, they have like little buttons so you can, you can match your, your little tagline with the button. So, um, you know, 
if we've got a webinar coming up and, and this again is, is not evergreen. You want to change it up. You want to keep it relevant, but like, you know, click on the button below to join our latest modern sales mastery webinar. And so then people can click on that. Of course, once the webinars, and you might even have a background image that, that speaks to the webinar. Once that's over, you go back to the more generic one with your company, your company's tagline and the link that takes them to your company page. But you can always manipulate that. And then of course, as far as sharing content, don't just share job openings. I, I go to so many companies and it's like, oh, it's our recruiting page. No, they actually have a recruiting page that you can add to your company profile. Use your company profile, yes, to build out your culture, Yes, to let people know what it's like to work at your company, but also what's happening with your clients, you know, what's happening in the world, what's happening in the industry. How can you curate the right type of content for your audience so that they continue to come back and back and back again? What are the best ways to build your network in LinkedIn and build a That's network that really you're going to be able to engage with, not just an, a large number of followers. Yeah, exactly. And to that point, it's not a, it really is quality, not quantity. And so with the way LinkedIn's algorithm works um, to that point, like the more people who stick to, it's called dwell time, the more people who stick to your content to actually read it and engage with it, the more likely LinkedIn is to open it up um, to your full audience or fullish audience and then out and beyond your audience. So for visibility alone, you really want quality connections. Um, but the trick to quality connections is starting the conversation first. I mean, in real life, I, you know, if you and I were at a conference and you were a prospect of mine, I wouldn't run up to you and go, Hey, Nathan, let's connect. Uh, you should totally buy my stuff. Hey, buy my book. Okay. And yet that's how people are using LinkedIn. I would go, Oh, there's Nathan. And I'd lurk a little bit, right? I'd see who you're talking to. I see what you were talking about. I kind of like, I'd be a little bit of a stalker and you can do that on LinkedIn and it's okay. Yeah. And then when I saw you say something or heard you say something that I could engage with, i.e. on LinkedIn, you shared a post, I would start engaging with you publicly on that post. You know, yes, by liking the post, but also by asking you a question, by commenting on you know, something in the post that you shared. Um, but that starts to build some awareness. And then I would reach out and say, hey, Nathan, great post the other day you shared, love the podcast that you did with, um, would love to connect. Are you open to that? You know, what are you going to say? No? Well, maybe. But that way I'm, I'm referring to something real, not like, ooh, I noticed we're both in this group or we both have a bunch of shared connections. I get that all the time. I'm like, really? Who? And why would, why, you know, why would that person be relevant to me? Like, I just want to, I just want to like go really and shake them because I know someone's teaching them that and they don't really mean it. Um, so whatever you can do to build that real relationship, even before you invite them to connect, the likelihood of, you, of them actually accepting that invitation goes through the roof. And yes, does it take longer? Absolutely. Will you be able to go through a bunch of individuals, um, you know, in one fell swoop? No, but we're talking about quality connections here, not just quantity. Okay. So, so that's how you get the initial connection. Yeah. Once you have that connection and you've made the invite, how yeah. do we maintain and improve those relationships? Effectively? Yeah. And that's the other thing. So many people are like, let's connect. And then you connect and they put you on their newsletter and you're like, wait, I didn't sign up for that. Um, so you want to continue that conversation. Now, what's cool about LinkedIn, and they've had it for a while, but you can leave voicemails and you can even leave video messages. It's easier on your phone, but you can do it on your desktop too. Eh, the voicemail, not so much, but the video message, you can do either on your phone or your desktop. But what a great way to continue the conversation and give people a real sense of who you are. And of course, your first follow-up message should not be buy my stuff. It should be, you know, I know that, you know, as a podcaster interviewing people about monetization, you know, you probably, um, you, you know, you probably need a way to track all the comments 
on your podcast, have you tried this tool yet? It doesn't even have to, I'm making this up again, but it doesn't even have to be your own tool. You're just being helpful and useful. Like, hey, try out Nimble. It's really great for tracking, you know, engagement on social and it's free. Um, let me know what you think. And by the way, I have nothing to do with Nimble. I just happen to like the product. Like, you know, hope you like it. Let me know. So you're just, you're curating helpful, useful things for them. And then when it makes sense for you to do the actual pitch to say, Hey, let's have a meeting. You, you sneak that in, but it's never the first message. And if you can, like I said, if you can do that via, you know, a voicemail or a video, video. message, give me some advice here. So I've, I have wanted to provide value to my LinkedIn right. followers. I have, I hit that 30,000 yeah. Follow, a yep. connection link on LinkedIn. And I've had yep. to go remove connections so that I can I know. <laughs> keep accepting people. And so I want to establish deeper connections with my yep. connections on LinkedIn. And so I've done a TED talk about passion marketing. And yes. so I wrote a book, uh, an ebook, you know, it's a little 30, 40 page ebook about, yeah. uh, about uh, passion marketing. And yep. I want to give that away to my LinkedIn connections as value, right? Yeah. What is the best way to do that without seeming like a spammer, right? I don't, don't want to seem like, Hey, I'm trying to sell you something. I want right. to make it feel like, okay, I've got something of value here. I'm trying to take one of the best thought leadership things that I know. I want to, I'm putting yeah. it in a digestible form and I'm giving it to you for free, right? Yes. How do I yes. do that and give that to those connections? So first of all, consistency, right? And it's hard. It's hard when and I'm, I'm right there with you, I, you know, 30,000 followers and, and you don't want to use automation. So you, um, with, you know, with, with a tool like sales navigator, I can, I can create lists or sort there's third party tools that allow you to list and sort heck you can create a, a folder on LinkedIn and, and pull in the profiles of the people that you want to keep in touch with, but no, you're not going to be able to launch you're not going to be able to legally launch an uh, engagement fan, um, uh, campaign to 30,000 people unless you use autom automation. And like I said, LinkedIn's like, you can't do that. So choose your choose the individuals, the quality individuals that you really do want to create that relationships relationship with. And I would, you know, again, I would use video and be like, okay, to be transparent, I know you haven't heard from me in like forever. And now I'm starting in, but I have, I did this Ted talk. I've got an ebook and I want to share just one digestible tip with you a week, you know, so hope you're open for it. And here's tip number one, right. And like do these bite-sized pieces of content and you can, of course, still use that and, and send it out, you know, through a, an update, but use these bite-sized pieces of content that people can absorb. And, you know, 101, it's way too many tips. I'm never, I'm not going to send necessarily, unless they ask for it, I'm not going to send someone the whole book, but maybe I find, you know, one tip that I think they're going to be find useful in utilizing SlideShare or documents in your posts and why it's important. Great. There's the tip. I can literally do a screenshot, right? Of that particular page. You could do the same thing, do a screenshot of your ebook, give them the tip, let them know, you know, why it's helpful. You can add a link to the whole ebook if you want to. Same with your TED talk. Grab excerpts out of your TED talk. You probably had at least, you know, 10 things that you talked about. Like if I was gonna, if if we turn this podcast into an ebook, the first tip I would recommend is the voicemail. That was probably, or the, uh, the video message or the voicemail. That was probably the most useful thing that we got yeah. out of today. And so the, just those little bite-sized pieces and create that cadence, that consistent cadence. And then, yeah, people feel like they know, they like you, they trust you because you haven't tried to sell them anything yet. And they're likely more likely even to reach out to you and you'll get that inbound lead and then it's all game, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Vivica, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, our banner image should be attractive, eye-catching, help convey our story and be aligned with our brand. Number two, our headline should include our key value proposition. Number three, our profile photos should be professional and high quality. Number four, our about section should show our customers how we can help them. Number five, don't try to be everything to everyone. We should focus on the needs of our buyer personas. 
Number six, our LinkedIn page should be filled with valuable content, such as blogs, videos, and testimonials. We don't want a LinkedIn profile that looks just like a resume. Number seven, the best way to build a network is to focus on quality over quantity. Number eight, before we connect with someone, we should start a conversation. After we've connected, we should continue that conversation. To learn more about or connect with Vivica, you can connect with her on LinkedIn, you can visit her website at vengresso.com, or you can find her books on amazon.com. And there's links to each of these sites on the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. You can get a free ebook about passion marketing and learn how to become a top priority of your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. You can also subscribe to Monetization Nation on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook group, and on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in your LinkedIn marketing. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.